In today's video, I'm gonna be using a brand new laser that I got. This is by Creality, it's called the Falcon 2. You guys saw my review on the Falcon 1. I was super impressed with that laser, especially for the price, but gotta say, I'm even more impressed with the Falcon 2. And I'll tell you a little bit more why in just a minute. But first, I wanna tell you about this first project that I'm really excited about. And that's, uh, I had an extra base case left over from my last round of pre-orders. One of my clients decided that they wanted to risk shipping without a hard case. And so I decided that I wanna see if I can use these lasers to engrave Tolex. Um, so this, you know, the case is covered in Tolex. And if I can engrave Tolex, then that opens up a whole new world of opportunities for putting uh, my logo on cases or custom work for clients, putting their band's logo on cases or amplifiers and stuff like that. So I definitely wanted to give that a try and the results were awesome and also very smelly. <laughs> okay, uh, I don't know exactly what Tolex is made out of and I probably recommend if you're gonna be playing with lasers that you know the material that you're engraving. So don't follow my example but I'm pretty sure there's some sort of plastic or vinyl it laced into it because the smell that came from it was horrendous. And if it was vinyl or plastic, there's a good chance that I was releasing hydrochlorine gas into the air, which is really unsafe. Of course I did it with the garage door open and a box fan blowing those dangerous fumes away from me. But even still, I recommend if you're gonna try doing something like this, that you do it outdoors with a good breeze. Make sure you're carrying all that poisonous gas away because it is toxic and it does also wreak havoc to machinery. So you don't wanna ruin your nice new laser. Anyway, do it at your own risk. Don't necessarily follow my example, but I am very happy with the results that I got. I mean, it is nice and crisp and clear, and it pretty much melted the Tolex onto the wood, so it has a really nice texture, sort of 3D effect, and it looks great. Now, one of the reasons why I wanted to try it out on Tolex is because I have this little 4x12 project cab that I got on Marketplace for like 20 or 30 bucks, and I figured even just for the amp corners, handles, and casters, it was worth it, but my plan was to recover it and put in some new speakers and have a sweet custom 4x12 cab. But then I got to thinking, you know, if it engraved Tolex really good, maybe it'll engrave the carpet that's currently on it right now. And so why not? So I stacked it up on my workbench, slung up the Falcon 2 and engraved again, just really nicely into that carpet. It just kind of melted the carpet, it had a little bit of a burnt carpet smell. Um, not nearly as bad as the Tolex, so uh, probably definitely safer to be using a laser on something like that. But man, the texture and the 3D effect as a result were just super crisp and clear and very cool looking. So I'm really excited to do like a paisley texture or a motorcycle texture or a rattlesnake texture or something all around the sides of the cabinet. I think that's gonna look super cool. So make sure you stay tuned if you wanna see how that turns out. But likely, if you landed on this video, you landed here because you wanna see me make this steampunk Stratocaster loaded pit guard. So let me show you how I made it. Firstly, I just found some inspiration for some steampunk Stratocasters. And then I imported those images into Lightburn and then I kind of made it my own. As you can see, this is an HSS setup. And so as I was kind of tracing out the design, I just kind of adapted it to work with what I'm going for. And I love the 3D effect. I think it turned out so good. And the Falcon 2 cut it out, lickety split, super clean cuts. Um, I didn't have to touch up the edges at all. I just cut clean through this three mil plywood like butter. I mean, I think maybe it took 20 minutes total for all the gears and cogs as well as the skeleton of the pit guard. Now there's a lot to love about the Creality Falcon 2 and I'm gonna go over all those features right now. But firstly, the most important thing is the laser module. It is 22 watts, making it the most powerful laser that I've used on my channel to date by a whopping two watts. <laughs> you know, I tried out the Acer laser, which I loved. I tried out the longer Ray 5 20 watt, which I loved. And uh, apparently that extra two watts actually makes a difference because with those other two lasers, uh, cutting out the materials that I was cutting out, I kind I always had to maybe clean up the edges in a few spots and I never had to with this. Uh, I was using the same speed and cut settings and that extra two watts just made for super clean cuts. Now, even though I didn't need to cut anything super thick for these projects, it is worth mentioning that the Falcon 2 is pretty much made for cutting thick lumber. I know it can cut up to 15 millimeters in one pass and if you're willing to do a few passes, you could probably cut much thicker than that. Something that was really impressive about this was my unboxing experience. This whole thing came pre-assembled, okay? Uh, the Falcon one that I reviewed 
went together really fast. It was mostly assembled. I think I had it together in about 12 minutes maybe. And this one I had together in about 12 seconds because all I needed to do was screw in the feet and attach the laser module and it was good to go. Now, what's even more impressive is that this thing out of the box comes with all the accessories that I tell you guys you need to get if you wanna do laser engraving and cutting. It comes with an air assist with the nozzle pre-built into the laser head, which is awesome. But not only that, the air hose is pre-run for you in these awesome retainer clips, okay? Most of the lasers that I've assembled, I've had to hold that stuff together with zip ties, which is not bad, it definitely works, but I love just how thoughtful it was that they put on these nice little clips to keep it all organized. And like I said, pre-assembled. The air assist pump is incredibly genius, okay? You actually don't plug it into the wall. You plug it into this thing and your laser controller controls the airflow. You can adjust it manually with a little wheel on the side or even more importantly, you can trigger it with light burn. That was something that I didn't even know was possible until the Falcon 2 and I absolutely love it because uh, you, your airflow settings for your engraving and your cutting are a little bit different. And so if you're doing a multi-layer project where you have some layers that you're cutting and some layers that you're engraving, being able to have light burn trigger the air assist settings so you don't have to babysit it and adjust your dial as it runs through the program, it's just awesome. It's so convenient and so helpful. Like most of the lasers that I have been reviewing lately, it does come with an offline controller where you can, you know, save your G code to a memory card and run it. And this one does have homing and jogging features on it. It's not a touch screen, um, but honestly, you don't really need a touch screen. It's easy enough, uh, functions as it should. And if you're into doing stuff offline, you guys know from my previous videos, I pretty much never do because pretty much every one of my projects is a one-off project. So I just run it from my computer. But if you are running an Etsy shop or something and you're just gonna be printing off a lot of the same projects all day and you don't wanna tie up your computer, really handy feature. It also has a security lock to turn it on and off. This is a really important feature because with high powered lasers like this, they are dangerous. You don't want people tampering with them without your consent, right? So being able to lock it and take your key is super helpful. On the laser itself, it's got a new feature that I've not seen before, and that's dummy lights to let you know that your air assist is functioning properly or not. Uh, whether or not there's fire brewing or not. So there's a smoke detector and it'll start kind of flashing when it's detecting a lot of smoke. And then of course it'll shut down entirely if it detects that there's a flame. And then lastly, there's actually a little indicator for your lens, uh, which is really cool because I've never before seen on one of these lasers something to indicate that the lens needs to be clean other than maybe it's not cutting as efficiently as it used to. Then you kind of know that it's time to clean the lens. You take it apart and just kind of wipe it down, put it back together, no big deal. But this will actually give you an indicator when your lens is starting to get dirty. It'll start blinking at you and then eventually just stop if it's unusable. So very cool features built into the laser module. Like the other 20 watt high powered lasers that I've reviewed, this one does come with a fully enclosed shroud for the laser, which is really helpful, um, especially again, because these high powered lasers can be dangerous. Uh, that helps protect you from any light refraction if you are engraving you know metal objects and stuff uh, curved edges where the laser might bounce off uh, this thing's gonna gonna make it a lot safer it also has that protective viewing window so you can watch your project without having to wear your awesome laser glasses which are also included by the way so um, these are definitely the safest way to go but with the enclosed shroud and the viewing window I find myself reaching for these a lot less also included in the box is a nice honeycomb for you to use, um, which is fantastic. You need that for cutting. Uh, I didn't realize with my first laser that I was this close to burning down my house because I did not have a honeycomb for my uh, cutting projects to sit on. It also comes with riser legs, okay? The honeycomb and riser legs are typically something that most brands will charge as an optional upgrade, and I love that they are included in the box. Now, not only does it come with riser legs, but perhaps maybe the most thoughtful design aspect of this laser is that they put multiple multiple places where you can mount those legs. So uh, that was really handy for engraving the guitar case and the uh, guitar cab is because I could put the legs where I needed them so that they were out of the way of the project or narrow enough to actually fit sitting on top of the project. And so it's really cool, you just unscrew them, move them back and forth. There's three positions for each leg, so 12 positions total that you can put the legs, not to mention the included risers. Super, extremely helpful feature. So again, just, I'm super impressed with the Falcon 2, one of my favorite lasers to date. And uh, I'm, I definitely appreciate Creality for sponsoring this video and allowing me to continue to create the content that I like to create and 
fun projects like this. So if you guys are interested in picking up a Creality laser of some kind, I've got links down in the description for you to browse and shop as well as special coupon codes for you. But now I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about this pit guard. So if you guys ever set out to do a project and then that project just turns out like way better than you ever imagined, that's how I'm feeling right now about this pit guard. I mean, look at how freaking cool this is, the depth and dimension, and I've got it all loaded up. I've got some full-size pots in there. We have a neck and middle pickup from my custom shop, Epic Custom Shop, and they come with white covers, but I love that he uses acrylic bobbins and uh, just a clear tape so you can actually see the magnetic coil surrounding the pickups. And so I think just taking off those covers is the perfect look for this. And then I've got this uh, vintage age Zhang Bucker Alnico 8 overwound bridge pickup, which again with the aged cover on it, I think is really going to match. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to leave this like just kind of a raw wood color, kind of like a tinker toy looking sort of cogs and wheels, or if I'm gonna actually, you know, stain or dye or maybe even paint these kind of metallic colored and give it like a real like beat up, rusted, smoky, steampunk look. At any rate, the plan is to put it on this Music Lily Pro Alder strap body that I've been hoarding for myself. And I'm gonna to need to do some additional routing on it, obviously, so that it sits flush, but that's just gonna add more to the de depth and dimension of this thing. And I am just so excited. It's gonna look so darn cool. So if you guys want to see this project, make sure you guys are subscribed because I'm gonna finish it in a later video. I'm Dan, this is Guns and Guitars, and I'll see you in that next video.